Zach, make a PC that is purely for performance with no, and I mean no things to make it look nicer. No cable extensions, no RGB fans, nothing RGB. Thank you for the request. I got you right here. This is literally exactly what you're asking for. Ladies and gentlemen, this type of build goes against everything I stand for when it comes to my motto of aesthetics over everything, and I honestly wouldn't even give this build my own ZTT Clean AF badge. Instead, this is a $400 build that focuses on maximizing FPS per dollar, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to build one for yourself. I'm also gonna show you how to upgrade it over time, all after a word from today's sponsor. NordVPN. Chances are, if you're interested in a pure performance gaming PC, then you're also interested in a pure performance VPN service. There are a million different VPNs these days, but the one that I've personally been using since 2018 is NordVPN. Look, I made a video for them back in 2018, and since then I've continued my subscription, paying for it myself, and I use it all the time. NordVPN takes your cybersecurity game to the next level by defending you against threats such as man in the middle attacks, malware, and even ransomware. It also allows you to pretend you're in a different country, which was useful to me when I was deployed out to the Middle East and I wanted to continue watching American content on American-based websites. The thing I really like about NordVPN is that it gives you pre-configured server choices depending on what you want to do. If you just want the best speed somewhere in the United States, you can click on that, or if you're doing peer-to-peer -peer downloading, there's an option for that as well. They also have NordPass to secure your passwords and even NordLocker to keep your files protected. NordVPN is offering you all four free months if you snag a two-year plan from nordvpn.com slash Zach. It also comes with a risk-free 30 day money back guarantee and the link for that is down in the description. All right, so for around 400 bucks, if you're willing to buy a couple of used components, you can play literally any game in 1080p with this type of build. I mean, look at this. We fired up Cyberpunk and used 1080p and high settings and when running the built-in benchmarking tool, we got 64 FPS. Cyberpunk is one of the most demanding games right now and we're getting over 60 FPS with high settings and no sort of upscaling. Same thing for Hogwarts Legacy, which is another tough one to run. With 1080p and high settings, we actually got right on the money at 60 FPS and this was a super smooth experience. What about Starfield though? In 2024, we have super demanding games and then we have Starfield. 16 times the detail. You may need to upgrade your PC for this game. Who's laughing now? Starfield is in its own class, at least against the other games that we've been benchmarking lately, and most of my budget builds just can't run this game at 60 FPS unless we drop that resolution scale down to the early 2000s standard definition. Today, that all changes though. This is a Starfield capable gaming PC for 1080p if you enable FSR. Now with FSR, we are getting a little help here of course, but during our benchmarking run, we still managed to get right on our target 60 FPS mark using 1080p and low settings with a 100% resolution scale. This is really impressive for a $400 gaming PC, so let's talk about what's inside of it, shall we? Starting with the CPU, like I said, you gotta be willing to buy some used components and here's the first place where I definitely recommend doing that. This is none other than the Ryzen 5 3600 and per usual, I was able to scoop this up off AliExpress for $66. The price of these has been going up lately though. They started at the low 60s, I bought a ton of them at the mid 60s, and now they're up to around $70. I think more and more casual PC builders are starting to realize how valuable these are for budget builds, so definitely keep that in mind. And if you absolutely do not want to buy a used CPU or from AliExpress, then the next best thing I would recommend is a brand new Ryzen 5 5500 if you can find them for around 100 bucks. The price of most Ryzen chips has been fluctuating lately, but at $100, that's a very solid deal, and it'll make your build just a tad bit more expensive than mine. Both the 3600 and 5500 will work with this motherboard too, as this is the ASRock B450M ACR 2.0, and this has been consistently going on sale on Newegg for around $65, which is what I paid. If you're following the ZTT Deals channel in the ZTT Discord server, you'll already know all about this motherboard, but it actually just went on another killer combo deal with some RAM kits, and I scooped up even more of them. Now, this board doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, but you do have a ton of compatibility and upgradability with B450. There's also four RAM slots and it even comes with built-in Wi-Fi. It's a no-brainer for budget builds. Plugging into the motherboard, we also have a RAM kit and this is the Mushkin Stiletto 2x8GB 3600 megahertz kit that I've used before but not for a long time. At the time of building, this was just simply the cheapest 16 gigabyte 3600 megahertz kit that I could find, so that's why I went with it. For the Ryzen 5 3600, you will indeed see a difference in FPS going from 3200 megahertz to 3600 or especially from 3000 megahertz, so if it doesn't cost more than a few extra bucks, I always recommend these slightly faster 
faster speeds for the better FPS numbers. We also have the SSD down here. And again, this is just the cheapest one terabyte NVMe that I could find. It's the T-Force Cardia Z44L. And in case if you were wondering, yes, this is a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, even though our motherboard only supports up to Gen 3. This means that we'll be capped at Gen 3 speeds, but over the past few months, there just hasn't been a difference in price between the budget Gen 3 and Gen 4 SSDs. So that's why I've been buying Gen 4, even with these B450 motherboards. And by the way, because this is just an entry level NVMe drive to begin with, the 3500 over 3000 read and write speeds aren't even fully saturating the Gen 3 slot. So again, we're perfectly fine here. And to polish off this motherboard prep, we of course have our CPU cooler and we're definitely going with a stock Ryzen cooler. And I recommend you do the same if you have one. I explained this in my last video, but remember that if you buy a CPU from AliExpress, you most likely won't get nope. the stock cooler. But if you buy from a used marketplace like eBay or Java, most people will sell it included with the CPU. If you don't have one, then feel free to go with any of those budget $20 CPU coolers from the popular brands like Thermalright, Vtrue, or ID Cooling. Once the motherboard is complete, it's time to move on to the power supply. And this is gonna be a super quick and easy one because there's no extensions, no vinyl work, just zero aesthetics with this setup. This is just an MSI A550BM, which is a 550 watt, 80 plus bronze tier C rated unit. And it's absolutely perfect for a pure performance budget kind of gaming PC. And after that, we have the case. And this is actually another super popular item in the ZTT Deals channel. It's the Deepcool Matrix 40, which I ironically paid less than $40 for. This was on a great new egg sale down to just $38. And you definitely can't go wrong at this price. It did come with one black 120 millimeter fan in the back, which is appreciated. But I did add two extra black fans that I had in inventory already up at the front. Now, we did test cases like this before without the front fans. And with budget hardware in here, you will be perfectly fine. But I elected to add them simply because I had them. I promise your PC isn't going to explode if you have a 3600 and a 5700 XT in here without the front fans. But feel free to spend the few extra bucks for some 120s if you really want to. And finally, the last part we have here is our GPU. And honestly, there's probably none of you right now questioning what this is if you've been watching ZTT for the past year or so. It's of course the RX 5700 XT. This one here is specifically the Sapphire Pulse model. And I picked this up off eBay for $120. Just like the Ryzen 5 3600s on AliExpress, the price of these 5700 XTs has been going up lately because I think the casuals are finally starting to realize its value, but anywhere between 120 to even 150 is a solid price for what you're getting. The 5700 XT competes directly with the RTX 3060 without ray tracing turned on. And this is simply the definition of price to performance. Here's the rest of the games that we tested. And as you can see, other than the competitive titles where we specifically want the lower settings, we tested everything around 1080p high to ultra settings. And it was no problem for this build. Here's what the full parts list is looking like. And my total came out to $427. And if you're copying this at home, I would aim for anywhere between $400 and $450. There will be some flexibility depending on how much you pay for your CPU and GPU, as well as which case you find a good deal on, but everything else should be very close to the prices that I paid. But now I do want to help you guys out if you want a pure performance build like this, but you also want to spend a little more money and get more performance. There's only two or three parts that really need to be swapped out here. To achieve a much better 1080p ultra, or honestly, even a little 1440p gaming, I would recommend upgrading this Ryzen 5 3600 to a 5600 first, and then I would swap out the 5700 XT for a 6700 XT. Both of these combos are the meta right now in terms of price to performance, and this type of build will work perfectly with either of them depending on your budget. If you do elect to go down the 6700 XT route, I'd also recommend getting the A650BN power supply instead of the A550BN. You'll want the extra wattage and it's just a few bucks more. If you are a little stretched for cash right now, then honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go with the 3600 and 5700 XT right now and then upgrade to the next combo in like a year from now. Aside from that, the only other upgrade that you probably need in the next year or so is maybe 32 gigabytes of RAM, especially if you're trying to stream or do other things at once. And you can simply just buy the exact RAM kit to double it up to a four by eight, 32 gigabyte setup. So yeah, if you're an animal and you don't care about the aesthetics for whatever reason, then this is exactly the type of PC that I would build. If you'd rather achieve this level of performance, but with a build that actually looks good sitting on top of your desk, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.